You might be wondering why I'm all um, fouled and I've got my life jacket on. Well, um, a storm was after coming through for the last two days and um, a couple of the boats around the marina who were my friends, good friends, uh, their fenders have popped out so I've just um, been pushing those back in but I'm going to show you what it's like down here in a bad in the bad weather but I'm going to cut a lot of the noise out because it's just pure wind noise so we're going to go outside and we're going to have a look around it's calmed down a little bit now but it's costing 60 knots uh, happy uh, but she's doing fine she's still she'll be fine I'm more worried about the marina Dirty, dirty day. So there's obviously not much we can do outside. Um, just got back in, I've dried myself off a little bit, taken off my foul gear, and just as I got myself dry again, a uh, package got delivered to the marina. So obviously I had to put all my foul gear back on and go up and get the package. Could have waited till it stopped raining, but then I wouldn't have anything to do. So we're gonna open this and I know what it is. Um, I am hoping that this will make our lives when we're sailing a little bit easier. Um, these have been lacking severely the last two times we've been out, so uh, let's open it and see what it is. Don't be fooled by the packaging, it is not a musto. Um, I'm, got, I'm trying not to become one of those channels that does all the unboxing instead of work, but um, sod it, we'll just get on with it. So, they are obviously little winches. They sound lovely. Oh yeah. They're second hand. Um, I got them off a guy in the UK. And I will pop his Instagram up actually because he's got a lovely little boat. So I put it in the description. Um, and these came off that and I bought these off of him online. They're actually, like, I saw the pictures and they looked new, but they are looking really, really nice and fresh. They look almost brand new. There's a few very light scuffs that could probably have happened in, like, even if something was left in a store, but um, they are absolutely beautiful. And what I'm gonna use these for is they're gonna go behind my two jib sheet winches, and these will be used for furling the, the, the head sail. Um, they should be big enough. I was a little bit worried they might be too small, but you should be able to reef a head sail in by hand. Um, and if we really need some extra grunt we can use the, the forward winch, but um, these should be perfect for, for doing that job. I obviously can't fit these today because of the weather, um, but during the week we'll fit these on and we're planning to go out for another sail on the weekend. The temperatures are finally coming up. The next weekend is supposed to be like in the 20s, uh, inland somewhere, so maybe we'll, we'll get about 15 or 16 with a little bit of light wind, which is absolutely perfect. Um, so I'll get those on during the week and we'll test that this weekend. So I'm just putting in uh, more ballast. So I've got three more or four more bags of um, steel punchings. And um, that should bring up the total of ballast or added ballast to be about 400 to 500 kilos. Uh, a couple of people asked me how much ballast she originally had. She has her original ballast in the keel right now, but because the boat's so empty and there's no tankage or um, anything like that, she's quite light. Also because that rig is quite a lot bigger than the original, it's about two and a half maybe three meters longer than the original. Um, so her sail area is quite a lot bigger. I want to add extra ballast to offset that. But um, like even even with that extra half ton, she's 
way steadier and much, much better. So uh, I'm gonna get cracking and I will get this finished. So in the last episode, I said that the bottles that I was filling up with the ballast um, were five liters and that that amount of steel should be about 38 kilos. And then I accounted for a little bit of air in there thinking that there wouldn't be that much. But I've actually taken this up to my mate's bathroom and weighed it and they're barely 16 kilos. So I was drastically wrong, which is kind of a good thing because it means that I've actually put a lot less uh, weight into the boat, but it's had a bigger effect than I thought that much weight would have, if that makes sense. So I put about a quarter of a ton in, not a half a ton. She's gone down two inches and it's had a considerable effect on how tippy she was. So um, yeah, that's a good thing, I think. I haven't fully decided yet, but I think it's a good thing. So I've got about 10 in the keel now. Um, two more to go in, so that'll make 12. And then I've still got the rest of the, I need to run out of bottles, I need to get more bottles. Um, and I've got the rest of that ballast to put in, so um, yeah. So there they are in the keel. I'm not sure how well you can see that. So there's 12 of them in the keel at the moment uh, with more to go in. And that should have a considerable effect on the stability of the boat. I'm gonna put more in there for to see, to see what happens basically. But um, eventually that will be a water tank, hopefully. And the, oh, the ballast will be welded to the bottom of the keel rather than um, put into the keel like that. Well, it all depends if we actually need that extra ballast because there'll be two 200 litre tanks so this goes in there as well if you can see I don't know and I can actually fit um, two 400 litre tanks on the top uh, under this tank top so yeah um, that's good it's going, going alright I'm Leighton. I'm one of Reese's friends. I live on land, friends. unfortunately. He's one of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're fitting an aft winch. I don't know, Reese, what would you call that? It's for the, um, it's, yeah, just an aft winch, I suppose. Like, I'm going to use them for furling lines and, as you were saying earlier, if we have a cruising chute. Um, yeah, can you see of any reason not to go back that far? It looks kind of like where anyone else's winches are. Um, yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, it's good to be able to access from behind the helm too. Actually, yeah, because if you want to, yeah, because at least you could blow the headsail off from here, you know. Like if you've got the the, the wheel on, cruising away, you could probably reach the jib sheet and get that off quickly, and then crank up the um, the headsail further. Yeah, but if you if you've um, if you've left it that late, you're in trouble anyway. So. Oh, look at that sun. Beautiful evening here in Kinsale. <coughs> Isn't it, Ollie? What do you think, Ollie? Ollie. Hey, buddy. If you hadn't stepped in the paint earlier, we might invite you aboard. <laughs> what time is it? I wish you'd go to the pub soon. No, no, the booming. So that's uh, one winch on, and bed is bolted in, and we haven't fitted the other one just yet. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. That'll make life a little bit easier when we're furling in the headset, anyway, for sure. So yeah, let's get the other one done. So it's a bit windy outside, um, so I'm going to do this bit of video in here because uh, you won't be able to hear me. But anyway, um, sorry about the echo as well. Right, so I need to re 
do the um, chain pipe. So that's the chain pipe. Um, and as you can see, it's quite rusty. You can see daylight through it there. Um, and it's an old mild steel pipe. So I'm actually going to replace it with um, a piece of stainless. So I'll weld in the stainless pipe instead. Um, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to route the chain. So I'm just going to replace this as is, weld it straight in. And um, if down the line we want to bend it back or anything, it's not so much of a big deal. We can cut it off and put a bit of flexi on it or something. Um, but yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get going on that. Uh, plan is to drill it out with this from the top. So just core it out from the top. Oh, it should fall out. And then, um, yeah, we can uh, weld a new one in. There we go. If anyone wants a bit of pipe, send me a message. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually, so this pipe is really, really thin. It's only dairy tube. Um, so I'm hitting the weld way out on the edge and I'm letting the, mel the weld pool flow onto the, um, into the pipe. Uh, it seems to be working okay. Um, it seems to be working okay. So when this is welded all the way around, I'll probably go around and file it or grind it off. Probably use the file actually, because it's a bit more um, easy to get in there. But um, I'll run another bead all the way around it and try and let that, that flow in as well. Um, I'm not the best welder ever, but I'm um, learning as we go. And it doesn't look so bad. And now, there it is. I'm sure that the uh, professionals amongst you will think that's an absolute disgrace, but um, it's okay. There's three passes, so as I was saying, I, I welded first on the, on the, hull, on the deck and let it kind of flow into the pipe. Um, and then I welded over that on the outside and the inside, and then I capped it off again. So there's about four runs on it, um, which I'm hoping will be enough. So there's a big super yacht that's just pulled up into the harbor, um, which is a 60 meter expedition motor yacht, apparently. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the dinghy over and have a look and be like tourists and get all excited about the big boat. So uh, yeah, let's take the dinghy over and have a look.
not sure what's going on, but um, there is absolutely loads of the uh, guards, which is uh, our police. The customs boat is here. There's loads of Coast Guard guys um, and the Navy. So, and there's me pottering around in my dinghy and a um, bit of a swell. Actually more of a swell than I thought there'd be. Uh, we'll have a look at the super yacht there in a minute. But I need to go in and talk to the harbour master because we might be doing our insulation this weekend. So I just need to find a spot. And if these guys are going to be here all weekend, they're kind of screwed. But um, uh, we'll go in and talk to the harbour master there and see what he says. Turns out there is a guard conference on, which is why the Navy, Customs, and all the guards are here. Um, I thought they were just showing off to the super yacht, but um, there's actually something going on. So we will leave them in peace before we get arrested and go and have a look at this um, super yacht if my engine will start. looking at her specs earlier online she's 200 feet long she's got a helipad on the back two massive ribs uh, apparently she can sleep tw tw in 12 cabins she can see 24 people in 12 cabins 300 fi three 500 uh, horsepower engines and she was built in 1968 um, yeah her rib see that rib there see the engine on the back of that rib so there's two 150s one of those is probably worth twice as much as Zara <laughs> It's got a gazebo and everything. Heck sake. Silly. Silly boat. Right, so we've had a look at the fancy boat. Um, I'm bored and I'm going home. Oh, just got splashed. Let's get out of here before we get too wet. Tough life, Georgie dog. You alright? You bored? I'll give you a cuddle. Ah, oh, George. He's all bored. He's all bored. You alright? So, that's all for me today. I'm absolutely exhausted. I was out racing today and I got a little bit sunburned, but um. Yeah, hopefully now in the next video you'll see the insulation going in. So after months and months and months of uh, pushing towards getting that done, I think it's finally going to get done. So um, Stu's come in this weekend and if that can get done, I'd be so happy because the boat's going to be a completely different animal. So as always, a massive thanks to all the viewers, patrons um, and anybody who's kind of got involved with the project, people who've helped. But honestly, everyone has been, has been fantastic, but um, I'm absolutely exhausted, so I'm going to go to bed. And I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.